Pastor John, a listener named Alicia emailed to ask, what role does the vast field of art play in the church? In a nutshell, can you give a theology of art? (laughs) There are great books on art, and I haven't read most of them or written any of them, but... um, I'll tell you what I I think, and that that's all I can do. And if it's if it gives some help, I'm I'm thankful. I, um, art the word art, I think comes from a Latin word ars that means skill or craft or craftsmanship. So here's the way I would define the word: any effort to make something, and that could be an object or an action, like you make a dance, or you could make a um, a, an action in, in a play or an object like a carving or a painting or a sculpture or a poem. So any, any action that makes something that takes a special skill so that the result uh, is more than utilitarian or pragmatic but moves us um, more deeply, with beauty or wonder or something touching our soul uh, with a sense that life is more than than food and drink. So that's a long, complicated definition, but basically it's it's a a craft, a skill that aims at an effect that is more than just keeping food on the table. And um, what, what makes it Christian, I think, so here's the theology part, um, is God is an artist. He made the heavens that are telling something about his glory. In other words, he didn't just make the heavens to protect us from solar rays. He, he made, they're not just utilitarian, they're beautiful. They say something about his glory. And, and Job is just great on this. As you read the last chapters of, of Job, God is pointing to his artistry all over the place and what it says to Job about his, his life from nature. Um, and uh, Jesus, you know, the lilies and the, the birds and the leaven, uh, all of it is, is more than utilitarian. So my first way of getting at a theology of art is that God is one. And then secondly, I would say the Bible writers are one. They, they're artists. They, they, they put they, maybe three-fourths of the Bible is crafted in some way linguistically so that it's uh, poetic or striking or unusual, and it obviously evidences some craft that is intended not merely to communicate a raw fact, but to produce a certain kind of effect in us spiritually, which is what artists want to do. So there are acrostics in the Bible, and there are parallels in the Bible, and there are metaphors in the Bible, and these these writers clearly are giving artful attention to how they are shaping their words, and they're doing that under the inspiration of God. And maybe, maybe one more thing, Paul says, echoing Jesus, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do all to the glory of God. Well, that must mean take thought in everything you do to try to craft it in such a way that it has an effect that opens the eyes to see beauty, namely glory, the glory of God, which means there ought to be a way of eating pizza and drinking pop or uh, doing the laundry and making your bed and making meals and writing reports uh, and driving your car that that are not merely i got to get someplace or i got to get something done but rather i'm supposed to do it so that it has an effect beyond the merely utilitarian and jesus jesus said let, let your light let your light so shine that men may see your good deeds and give glory to your father in heaven so there we're to take our bodies and our lives and cause them to have a kind of brightness so that when people look at them, they look at them and they, there is a kind of artful intentionality that gets people to see something more than a mere, a mere body. So uh, God is the maker, right? And we have the mind of the maker. We talked about this once before. And, and therefore, it seems to me that um, 
Christians have the deepest and best foundations for serious art than anybody. Thank you, Pastor John. We did talk about vocation in episode 17 of this podcast series. Thank you for listening. Please send your questions via email to askpastorjohn at desiringgod.org. Please include your first name in your hometown. You can find thousands of other free resources from John Piper online at desiringgod.org. I'm your host, Tony Ranke. Thanks for listening.